Take a listen to this. We're going right. to go with the Fed to QE 99. In the economy of the cuckoo people that populate central banks, everything is possible. If you say that if he means what he says, then you believe in Father Christmas. The monetary policies of the U.S. will destroy the world. The Dr. Doom isn't done yet, and of course, on the most crucial Fed day of the year, and with the taper now off the table, he's joining us with some choice words for Chairman Bernanke. Mark, always a pleasure to talk to you. What's your reaction to this news, that there's going to be no taper? For now. Well, thank you for having me on your program. My view was that they would taper by about 10 to 15 billion dollars. But I'm not surprised that they don't do it for the simple reason that I think we are in QE unlimited. The people at the Fed are professors, academics. They never worked a single life in the business of ordinary people. And they don't understand that if you print money, it benefits basically a handful of people, maybe not even 5% of the population, 3% of the population. And when you look today at the market action, okay, stocks are up 1%. Silver is up more than 6%. Gold up more than 4%. Copper, 2.9%. Crude oil, 2.68%. And so forth. Crude oil, gasoline are things people need, ordinary people buy every day. Thank you very much. The Fed boosts these items that people need uh, to go to their work, uh, to heat their homes and so forth. And at the same time, asset prices go up, but the majority of people do not own stocks. Now, hang, Only 11% on. of Americans own directly shares. Hang on, Mark, because people need also mortgages, right? When they're starting families, a lot more people uh, need to get out of their parents' house and buy their own. Uh, people yes. need cars. The cars on the road are 11.4 years old. Those interest rates are being held down when the Fed continues this type of policy, no? Well, on September 14, 2012, when the Fed announced QE3, that was then extended into QE4, and now basically QE Unlimited, uh, the bond market had peaked out, in other words, interest rates had bottomed out on July 25th, 2012, a year ago, at 1.43% on the 10-year Treasury note. Mr. Bernanke said at that time at the press conference the objective of the Fed is to lower interest rates. Since then they have doubled. Thank you very much. Great success. Is this the unintended consequence, you think, of all this money printing? And what's the end game? Well, the end game is a total collapse, but from a higher diving board. The Fed will continue to print. And if the stock market goes down 10%, they'll print even more. And uh, they don't know anything else to do. And quite frankly, they've boxed themselves into a corner where they're now kind of desperate. Well, there's going to be a new head of the Federal Reserve. Expectation is that it's going to be Dr. Yellen. Uh, do you think we'll see any changes when she comes in? <laughs> yes, we'll see a huge change. She will make Mr. Bernanke look like a hawk. <laughs> like a hawk? Why? Why? What do you think she's going to do, uh, Mark Faber? She's got, she, in 2010, said if she could vote for negative interest rates, in other words, you would have a deposit with a bank of $100,000 at the beginning of the year, and at the end you would only get 95000 back, that she would be voting for that. And... Basically, her view will be to keep interest rates in real terms, in other words, inflation adjusted. And don't believe a minute uh, the inflation figures published by the Bureau of Labor Statistics. Uh, you live in New York, you should know very well how much costs of living are increasing every day. 
Now, the consequences of these monetary policies and artificial low interest rates is, of course, that the government becomes bigger and bigger, and you have less and less freedom, and you have people like Mr. de Blasio, who comes in and says, let's tax people who have high incomes more. Yeah. And, of course, immediately, because mm. in a democracy there are more poor people than rich people, they all applaud and all vote for him. I, that me, is the consequence. Yeah, interesting. Uh, and let's talk a little bit. Against. Let's talk about sort of some some asset classes here. Um, gold. You've been a big bull on gold. Uh, this, of course, uh, is good news for for gold investors. Where do you see gold heading? Well, I'm not sure that it will straight. I I think when I look at the market action today, I would like to see the next few days because it may be a one-day event. The markets are overbought, and the Fed has already lost control of the bond market. The question is, when will it lose control of the stock market? So I'm a little bit apprehensive. I'd like to wait a few days to see w how the markets react uh, after the initial reaction it was just piling into everything. It's a good point. You know, we saw the 10-year, for example, the yield come down uh, as the price sort of shot up momentarily. But uh, from the levels that we are at, it doesn't look like they're really having too much of an effect, uh, at least not as much as they'd like on the 10-year yield. Do you think that'll float back up to where we saw it uh, before 2 p.m. today? Well, actually, I have to tell you or confess to you, longer term, I'm, of course, negative about government bonds, and I think that yields will go up and that eventually there will be sovereign default. But in the last few days, when yields went to 2.9 and 3% on the 10 years, for the first time in years I bought some treasuries uh, because I have the view that they overshot and that they could ease down to around 2.2 to 2.5%. Because the economy is much weaker than what people think. What's the timing on that? 2.2 percent on the 10-year. Well, I think it was in the next three months, so or so. Okay, we'll watch those yields go down. Uh, any predictions on gold prices? Well, I always buy gold, and I own gold. I don't even value it. I regard it as an insurance policy. I think responsible citizens should own gold, period. But I think it, eventually it will go up, yes.